The Ugly Ballon. What is it and why do we need it? By Paul, Mike Zero, Whiskey November Uniform, or 26 Charlie Tango 730, if you catch me on 11 metres, and PMR 446. Hello, welcome back to the channel. It's Paul, Mike Zero, Whiskey November Uniform, or 26 Charlie Tango 730, if you catch me on 11 metres, and PMR 446. Now, this is the first of two videos about one particular subject. One of which um, you may find you may need. Um, it would be the Ugly Ballon. This isn't a ballon as such. Because all it does is it stops common mode... Basically, uh, common, common mode um, uh, currents on the outside uh, of your coaxial cable from the antenna. Basically stops your antenna and coaxial cable being all the same. Or, in other words, the coax would become part of the antenna if this wasn't there. All it is is um, a specified amount of turns of coaxial cable before the antenna. Say so if your antenna is a dipole, I've got a couple of these. Um, the T2LT design for 11 meters, that's basically an end fed dipole for all intents and purposes. Um, because it's basically two halves of the antenna and it's end fed. I've got a choke on that and it works quite well. Um, my homemade uh, dipole for the two meter band, that also has a choke on it for the same reason, except it's obviously scaled down for the two meter band. I do have um, uh, another two meter antenna that I haven't tested yet, which also has one of these on it. Well, actually, I've got two of them that I've, that I've made for that band that haven't been tested yet, though one of them might need some work to finish it off properly before it goes up. So, and I also decided to fit one to what my wife and I dubbed the spider antenna to make sure that that wasn't causing any issues with common mode currents. Although, this is basically just a ground plane antenna, but still better to be safe there because I didn't know that it would um, uh, whether it would do that or not well it seemed to work fine so here's why I'm bringing this up uh, when I put up the boomerang antenna and tested it on transmit I noticed that whenever I um, uh, put the back of my hand onto the coaxial cable coming into the shack the SWR meter would would move, then the um, uh, needle would drop and go up again as I put my hand on it. That to me would be a sign of uh, those common mode currents there. So I'm going to have to put one onto the boomerang before it goes out again. Uh, so part two will be making one of these. Uh, I don't have the parts at the moment, I have to go out and get the parts. Um, for both the spider antenna and the T2LT antenna for 11 meters, I've used a little plastic coupler that you can buy from b and Q. I'll pop a link to that one in the description of the part 2 video because that's where we'll be making it and this video is all about well essentially explaining why you'd need one so but to take a piece of coax cable I'll use um, the one coming off the T2LT as a good example, if I can get it out of the box. Here we go. So that's the one on the T2LT. Without the choke, which I can put, a pic put pictures up of shortly. So without this, which there will be a picture of it shortly, basically all that will be part of the antenna and that will be no good. Then everything connected to the connector on that would also become part of the antenna and again that would be no good. So, put that on, it should eliminate the, the um, uh, common mode currents. It's not cure-all for high SWR or anything, not, nothing like that at all. The best cure for a high SWR is, a, is, is an antenna that's actually resonant on the frequency you're using. So, I think um, uh, I noticed there was a bit of a narrow bandwidth on that boomerang antenna, which might have something to do with the common mode currents. I don't actually know yet without putting um, uh, an ugly ballon on there. It's just essentially a choke, that's all it is. It's a common mode choke. 
You find common mode chokes in modern electronics as well to get rid of some of the, the nasty noise that they can generate. Not all of the not all of them though. Some of the stuff imported straight in from China is to be desired. So, so we'll have a look at three of them. So the first one, I'm going to put that up on the screen, is one that is on my two meter dipole antenna. That antenna hasn't been used in a little while, but it does work. Um, the the SWR is well, it's more or less where it needs to be. I need a proper SWR meter. The cross needle one sometimes very difficult to read, um, but the choke is immediately on the on the antenna itself. So before the anten before the actual antenna itself, the choke is pretty much there. It's all um, uh, gooped up with uh, Sugru, so you can't actually get to the connect connectors to to disconnect anything. That's for waterproofing. So that antenna does work. I have got out on it. Um, I used it uh, with the VV898 in the video where I had to record where there was a fair bit of pager interference. You know. So that's the antenna I was using in that video. Uh, the spider antenna that showed no common mode issues at all. That's got a bigger choke, choke on as you'll see in the next picture which I'm going to put up on the screen for you. Um, that's white because we, my wife and I, decided we're going to paint the, the, whole, the whole thing white. And then finally, there is my T2LT that I've had for years that I use for portable operations on 11 meters. Um, you could build one of those antennas quite easily, uh, but that's not the subject of this video. Uh, you can find out how to build that um, if you search YouTube for T2LT antenna. Some of my videos might pop up. So that's got the same sort of design as the one that's on the spider antenna, but the spider antenna is the one on the spider antenna. The design is exactly the same as the T2LT because I remembered how I did it. So it's five turns on that tube, and as I say, it's not a balloon. It's it's a choke. So why why you need it? Uh, well, get rid of the common mode issues. With common mode currents on the on the um, uh, outside of the coaxial cable, which would in turn lead to interference as well, because the RF would just get into absolutely everything, and that's not good, especially if you're using SSB. Um, SSB has a bad habit of breaking through on everything, so you really need to make sure there's no common mode there. Although I'm not sure um, uh, if um, uh, that would stop any interference as such, or whether you'd have to go further with that. But I do know that it would get rid of common mode issues, so I am going to be building one in the next video. This video is all about just discussing what they are. Now, the number of turns is quite specific. I've got the information up on my phone, because I don't have a computer on the moment. If you search for G3TXQ Ugly Ballon, or Choke, there is a chart on that page. I will probably put um, a screenshot of that up as well. Well, showing you the chart. Now, if you are operating on CB only, nothing else, then the only part that will apply to you is the section on, if you look for air cord, and you're looking for five turns, it would be 5T, RG58 on four and a quarter inch air cord. The measurements for those plastic couplers aren't quite four and a quarter inch, but they do actually work. They are there. So it generally does work. It's quite easy to do. You just wind it round five times and then fasten it on the cable ties. If you can get cable ties through any holes on the on the actual coupler. I'll show you that in the making video. So I'll put this chart that I've got up into, into the video. I will obviously put a link to that chart as well in into um, uh, this, this, this video uh, in the description and then 
I will um, uh, obviously show you how to make it and that put that link into the descri description again on the next video. Um, so, if you find you've got a strange issue where if you touch the coaxial cable and you've got an SWR meter connected in line, the SWR goes down and then up again. If you move, about, move the coaxial cable about then you probably have some common mode issues. So, the best thing to do is to remove them at the first possible instance. So, what my plan to do is, is to build one, which I will be building on video, and then it will be connected to the boomerang antenna, because I believe that's a kind of dipole, judging by the way it's behaving, um, with the common mode issues. So that means I've got to take off the coax that's on there right now. So. It's kind of also critical you don't get it anywhere near the ante antenna element or in contact with it anyway and uh, anything metal I believe would upset it as well. So that's going to be quite a difficult one for me to, to sort out because the connector for that antenna is pretty close to to the metal work that holds it onto the um, uh, mast. So. But either way, I'll, sh I'll show you how it's made. I should have some RG58 I can use for that. Because, um, it's, again, it's only five turns. And on HF, RG58 isn't too bad. It's not so bad on CB if it's only a short amount. It's only bad when it becomes a bit too too long. So I'll see, I'll see what I've got, and then we'll go from there, and I'll build one with you together. So... Well, there's nothing else to say on the subject, really. If you if you wanted a proper balance, say you're using a wire antenna, then there's information on that online. This the ugly balance isn't actually a balance. And in case you're new to all this and wondering what on earth am I talking about? Basically, I'm talking about uh, five turns of wire close close together. On a plastic tube, it's fastened together with cable ties, which stops, which stops your um, uh, cable to your aerial being, being part, being actually part of the aerial. So, that's if you're all new to the old CB. I'm going to do a getting started in radio video as well. That will be for a little little future video that I'm going to do. I'm not going to obviously do that today. Um, so I've got obviously got to get this one done. So, so balan is basically shortened for balanced and unbalanced. Basically, a dipole antenna is a balanced antenna, and coaxial cables un is basically unbalanced feed. So, therefore, if you wanted to feed your dipole with balanced feed, you'd use um, a ladder line, but you'd still need to um, uh, you'd need a four to one balan, I believe, for that. I could be wrong though, because it's been a while since I've um, uh, done any reading up on antennas, because I haven't really built any for a while. <laughs> so, right. So, the ugly balance. Not a balance, just a choke. Stops your feed line radiating. And uh, also, should also cut down on interference as well. And very simple to make, and also very cheap to make. If you've already got the cable, and you've already got, and you've already got them access to the plastic tube, it could cost you actually nothing, except the cost of um, uh, the connectors. So, right, I'll catch you in the one where I actually make this. Um, I have to um, obviously go out and buy the actual parts I need. Um, so, once again, there'll be a link to the to the G3 TXQ chart and that should also be in the video anyway if it isn't then I'll pop it in so this is Paul Mike Zero Whiskey November Uniform or 26 Charlie Tango 730 if you catch me on 11 meters in PMR 446 um, and I'll catch you hopefully the next one will be making of the ugly ballon because obviously I want to see if I can see how well I can get this antenna to work and the quicker I get that done the better so, 7-3 for now.
Oh, and don't cook yourself with RF. Don't forget, you can subscribe to this channel and ring the bell to be notified of new videos as I upload them. Send your from Paul, Mike, Zero, Whiskey, November, Uniform, or 26 Charlie Tango, 730 on 11 meters and PMR 446.